Hey there, let's talk about suffering in the military. Throughout a 20-year Army career and finding myself in war and various military operations, here are the main lessons that I've learned. Number one, you are not that important. In our culture, we place an emphasis on our feelings. We ask, how did this person make you feel? How did this action make you feel? Are you feeling okay? What is your identity as an individual? People generally have a sense of entitlement, that the world or the country owes them something, that somehow they are always being mistreated. And as humans, we are naturally selfish creatures. We want to know how things are benefiting us. We want other people to acknowledge us and value us. We crave that our ego is being fed. However, the truth is that in the military, the most important thing is the mission. Not you and not your feelings. For example, there were times when I had the flu with a fever in Iraq. And despite my feelings, I still had to climb up on a turret and get behind a machine gun in order to provide security for others on a convoy. I was coughing, sneezing, while scanning my sector for enemy activity. The unit was shorthand, and it had to be done. It did not matter that I wasn't feeling well. It wasn't about me. It was about the mission. If you wake up and you're not feeling well, too bad. The mission continues. If you find out that your spouse is cheating on you, and you're suffering from a broken heart, well, too bad. The mission continues. If there was no food available today and you're thirsty because you quickly drank through your water ration, well, too bad. The mission continues. If you're dealing with anxiety or depression and you feel that maybe you need a mental health day, well, too bad. The mission continues. I think you get the idea. The enemy doesn't care what individual issues you might be experiencing. The enemy doesn't care that you feel life has been unfair to you. They violently attack you, and they attack regardless of how you're feeling physically or emotionally. And what if you die? The mission continues. Actually, if you read the lyrics to the official army song, The Army Goes Rolling Along, it actually speaks to this concept. Everyone in the military is replaceable, from the private to the four-star general. No one person is too important. And bullets and explosions, they do not hold any preconceived biases. Does anyone really think that the shooting or the bombs will stop because you're not feeling like yourself today? Of course not. So if it is not about you, then what else is there? Well, you start considering everyone and everything else. Instead of focusing on the internal, you look to the external. How can I help my team? How can I make sure this mission has a higher probability of success? How can I sh make sure that our group is okay? You stop saying I, and you start saying we, us, you. You also stop blaming others for your problems or shortcomings. You take more responsibility for your actions and how your actions impact the team. This is actually one of the seven army values, selfless service. Coincidentally, when you overcome your selfish instincts and focus on others, you actually feel better about yourself. To summarize, the priorities are in this order. The mission, the team, meaning the other soldiers, and then, if there's time, then you. The second thing I learned is rehearsals are everything. As a young soldier, I hated rehearsals. To me, it was so time-consuming and pointless. The same thing over and over and over again. I recall there were dozens of times where I was wiping the sweat from my forehead while putting on my body armor, my helmet, grabbing my weapon and entering an armored vehicle for the 20th time. Then our team would pretend that one of our vehicles was destroyed and we were expected to react to it. 
Now, if I stop to think about it, it all makes sense. We can see in a football game, teams execute amazing plays on the weekends. When these teams score touchdowns, it involves a lot of people doing their job perfectly. And it doesn't just happen. It is a byproduct of the numerous rehearsals the team conducts. When you listen to a song or watch a musical concert, a movie or a play, even the Olympics, all of these events exist because of thousands of hours that people put into rehearsals. Most people do not just pick up a bike for the first time and automatically learn how to ride it. You cannot learn how to play chess today and then tomorrow expect to be a chess master. A lot of people try to do something once or twice and they decide to quit because they're not good at it. Instead of sticking with it, investing the hours and becoming determined to succeed. Anything done with great proficiency comes from the rehearsals. Embrace rehearsals. In the military, we try to develop what we call muscle memory. During an attack, we want our soldiers to react based on hours of training, and we want them to engage and destroy the enemy without a lot of extra thought or effort involved. But rehearsals do not start and end in the military world. If you are a civilian, try to make sure that you are doing rehearsals even if it is just for a simple presentation you're doing. And if possible, if you're in a leadership role, then make sure your teams are doing rehearsals. The amount of rehearsals you decide to conduct will have a huge impact on the final quality of work or the quality of your presentation. And I cannot stress it enough. Rehearsals are important, even if it feels monotonous. The third thing that I learned, the more difficult the journey, the more rewarding the outcome. The happiness a person experiences from instant gratification, it does not last long. We desire the journey. We crave it. When something is handed to us, it is not the same. Think about it like this. We achieve a sense of accomplishment when we complete an online class or when we receive an A on an assignment. But we are ecstatic when we finally meet the criteria to earn that college degree. The degree typically has a more rewarding feeling because you probably spent four or five years working towards it. It took dozens of classes and maybe even hundreds of tests. It wasn't just handed to you. It was the journey. In football, it's great to win your first preseason game, but that pales in comparison to winning a playoff game or perhaps playing in the Super Bowl at the end of the season. It was the journey. The same holds true in the military. When you make it through a 12-month deployment, while a successful mission provides initial contentment, a deployment represents hundreds of missions, and veterans hold on to those memories. Whether they were good or bad, they hold on to them forever. It was the journey. I think it's useful to apply this lesson to life in general. Do not shy away from the challenges. It is usually the long and difficult endeavors that produce the most joy at the end of the journey. Well, that pretty much wraps up the video on the three lessons suffering in the military taught me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.